Good day to our dear televiewers and subscribers. Welcome to DepEd Teleturuan. I am Mary Ann C. Ramitere, Junior High School Teacher 3 of Campino National High School, your teacher presenter in Mathematics 10. Today, we will be discussing the lessons in Module 2 for the second quarter, entitled Problems Involving Polynomial Functions. Before we proceed with the lesson's learning objective, you may look at your Module 2 for Quarter 2 entitled Problems Involving Polynomial Functions since what we are going to discuss today is in line with the said module. In addition, this module was written by yours truly. And here is our learning objective to solve problems involving polynomial functions. Problems involving polynomial functions seem to be a challenging but an interesting topic in mathematics. Let us find out how polynomial functions can be used in our real-life situations. For example, the weight of the patient W and the number of weeks since the patient became ill N can be modeled in this given polynomial function. Second example, the concentration C in parts per million of a certain drugs in the bloodstream after T hours can be modeled in this given polynomial function. Third example, the roller coaster can be modeled in this given polynomial function. C, even its polynomial function is such a roller coaster. These are some examples of real-life situations where we can apply the concepts of polynomial functions. Now that you already knew some examples of real-life situations where we can apply the concept of polynomial functions, let us solve problems involving polynomial functions. But before that, I have a trivia for you. Did you know that if you are going to look at the cross-section of a honeycomb, you will see a pattern of hexagons? This pattern has one hexagon on the first ring, six hexagons on the second ring, and 12 hexagons on the third ring. That's 19 hexagons for the three rings. Now listen carefully. The total number of hexagons in a honeycomb can be modeled by the function p of r equals 3r squared minus 3r plus 1, where r is the number of rings and p of r is the number of hexagons. Our task is to show that the polynomial function p of r equals 3r squared minus 3r plus 1 gives the total number of hexagons when r is equal to 3. Here's how we do it. This is our original function. Step 1, substitute r with 3. Step 2, perform indicated operation. 3 squared times 3 is 27. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. And 27 minus 9 plus 1 is 19. The total number of hexagons in a honeycomb with 3 rings is 19. There we have it. We have proven that this polynomial function gives the total number of hexagons in a honeycomb when r is equal to 3. Let's proceed to the second example. What is the maximum area of a rectangle with a perimeter of 40 feet? Since this is the formula in getting the perimeter of a rectangle and P equals 40 feet, then 40 is equal to 2 times L plus 2 times W. Dividing both sides of the equation with 2, we have 20 equals L plus W. And solving for W, we have 20 minus L. Since the area of a rectangle is A equals L times W, the left area can be expressed as A of L is equal to L multiplied by quantity 20 minus L, since W is equal to 20 minus L. Using this distributive property, we have L times 20 equals 20L, and L times negative L is equal to negative L squared. Let us rearrange the terms. 
factor out negative 1. Complete the perfect square by getting half of negative 20. And then square it. We have 100. But since we added negative 100, we have to add 100 so that we will not change the original equation. Express this into square of a binomial. Here's what we need. Equate this into 0. Since the area of a rectangle is a equals l times w, the lat area can be expressed as so l equals 10. Since w equals 20 minus l, so we will change this with 10. 20 minus 10 is 10. Last step. Since this is the formula in getting the area of a rectangle, we have to change length and width with 10 and 10. The product is 100. Therefore, the maximum area of a rectangle with a perimeter of 40 feet is 100 square feet. To precisely graph the function, we can use graphing software such as GeoGebra or Desmos Graphing Calculator. This software works fine in computers, laptop, or Android phone. Simply encode the function and the graph will be shown. As you can see on the graph, its maximum point is located at 10, 100. Therefore, the maximum area of a rectangle with a perimeter of 40 feet is 100 square feet. Example number 3. You have a rectangular piece of paper whose dimensions are 20 inches by 16 inches. You are required to cut out the four corners of the rectangle so that you may fold up the sides to create an open box with a volume of 300 cubic inches. These are the questions. Letter A. What polynomial function would you use to find the volume of the open box if x represents the length of the cuts? Letter B. What is x or the length of the cuts? And letter C, what are the length and width of the box? Let us analyze the situation. We have a rectangular piece of paper whose dimensions are 20 inches by 16 inches. Then, we will cut out the four corners of the rectangle so that you may fold up the sides to create an open box. This gives us the height of the open box, which is x inch. The length will be 20 minus 2x inch and its width will be 16 minus 2x inch. Let us now answer the first question. What polynomial function would you use to find the volume of the open box if x represents the length of the cuts? The working equation is v equals l times w times h. Substituting the given data, we have v of x equals quantity 20 minus 2x multiplied by quantity 16 minus 2x multiplied by x. We can rearrange this function. So, the volume of the open box is v of x equals x multiplied by 20 minus 2x multiplied by 16 minus 2x. Question number 2. What is x or the length of the cuts? We will use the polynomial function of the volume of the box that we got from question 1. Replace v of x with 300. Next, multiply the factors on the left side of the equation. This will be its product. Subtract 300 on both sides of the equation. This gives us 4x cubed minus 72x squared plus 320x minus 300 equals 0. Divide both sides of the equation by 4. This will be the new equation. Factor the left side of the equation. We may use rational root theorem. Using this theorem, the possible roots can be found by dividing the factors of the constant term and the factors of the leading coefficient. These are positive or negative 75, positive or negative 1, positive or negative 25, positive or negative 3, positive or negative 15, and positive or negative 5. We will try 5 as the divisor in synthetic division. The dividend will be 1, negative 18, 80, negative 75. Bring down 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 
negative 18 plus 5 is negative 13. 5 times negative 13 is negative 65. 80 plus negative 65 is 15. 5 times 15 is 75. And negative 75 plus 75 is 0. Since the remainder is 0, then x minus 5 is one of the factors of the given equation. What is the other factor? This can be found in the quotient. This will be the constant term. This will be the linear term. And this will be the quadratic term. And this forms a quadratic expression. But we cannot factor it further since there are no such numbers with a product of 15 and a sum of negative 13. With this, we will just get the first factor and equate it with 0. So, x is equal to 5. Therefore, the length of the cuts or the height of the box is 5 inches. Last question. What are the length and width of the open box? Substitute the value of x to get the length. Since L is equal to 20 minus 2x, then L is equal to 20 minus 2 times 5. Performing the indicated operation, L is equal to 10. Substitute the value of x to get the width. Since W is equal to 14 minus 2x, then W is equal to 14 minus 2 times 5. Performing the indicated operation, W is equal to 6. Therefore, the length and the width of the open box are 10 inches and 6 inches respectively. There we have it! We have solved problems involving polynomial functions. Thank you for watching! Again, this is Mary Ann C. Ramitere of Continue National High School. See you on the next episodes of Deben Hour Teleturuan. God bless us all!